Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass. Google I.O. 2021 happened yesterday. I've got my Google Pixel 5, so of course it is going to be running the Android 12 Beta 1. So, let's take a look. Now before we get into what is new with Android 12, I just wanted to go over some features that are not actually yet available in the newest Beta 1. Now Google I.O. yesterday, they announced a ton of new Android features, and yes, some of it is definitely going to be coming to Android later down the line, but the full release of Android 12 is going to be later on in the fall. Now with what we've got at the moment, there are some visual tweaks and some stuff in these settings that is new, however it's not a massive change compared to what you're going to find with Android 11, at least at the moment. Obviously they've got the brand new material you way of actually theming your device and just in general making it look your own. Now this can be done in numerous different ways however one of the most awesome ways that they showed in the IO was actually just using it based on your wallpaper. It basically will pick out a color palette and you can actually choose from multiple different palettes that Google has picked and then it's basically going to theme your device to match your wallpaper. Now this is something that I actually try and do on a regular basis if I'm using something like Nova Launcher just to basically get a coherent theme throughout my whole device so to have this being done automatically from Google is really awesome to see. There's also going to be some new elements with regards to privacy, so things like the camera and microphone, anytime they're in use, no matter what the application, it is going to show a little indication in the top right hand corner, just to let you know exactly that it's being used in the background, or if it's used in something like Instagram for example, just to let you know that it is being used. Now it would also show up in some of those other kind of maybe more dodgy applications where yes it does need access to maybe your camera and your microphone, but it may be something as simple as a wallpaper app. Now you can also then go in and change all of these privacy permissions individually per application and it will also give you a really awesome graph just letting you know exactly what is being used and when so again allowing you some really deep integration with regards to privacy and just in general making android your own make it as private or as open as you want there will also be some new quick tile options in regards to seeing your wallet so any cards that you may have on your device will show and you can also then turn off the camera and microphone completely now doing this and turning on any of these toggles for the camera or mic once you then go into an application that uses something like this it basically just won't work at all so if you turn off the camera and then go into instagram to take a photo for example it's just going to show a black screen and it's going to basically fake instagram into thinking that there is no camera on your device at all and that goes the same for the microphone so what exactly is new in the beta 1? Well, I've got it installed here on my Pixel 5 and I've got my screen recording just here. So let's take a look. Now, the first thing you're going to notice straight away is it looks very similar to what you're going to find with the standard version of Android 11. Now, that's because a lot of the custom elements and the material you design hasn't yet fully been integrated. Now, one thing that I would say, though, is when you go into the quick settings, this is when you're going to see a massive change. Now, not just in the way that it looks, but in regards to the button size as well. So as you can see here, you've got your standard four quick settings at the top. And if you swipe down again, it's going to give you access to your brightness slider and all of your quick settings that you've got and again these can be customized changed removed and you can add multiple ones if you need to so again really nice design there and you can see as well with regards to the notification panel it actually now covers the screen completely you can't see through it there's no transparency or anything like that it's just a really nice clean card ui now as you can see here i do have the screen recording which i'm doing at the moment and of course i've got the weather here and again they can still be expanded and kind of closed and minimized down and you can also just swipe them away as well much like you would normally there's going to be a ton of different options with regards to different conversations that you're going to find with Android 12. So with something like text messages, WhatsApp, Facebook message, they're all going to have their own individual screens as you can see here. So again, just a really nice integration. Now one thing that is definitely going to be changing and for the better is the volume slider. For some reason on beta 1 it looks like this and again it's black and then it's blue, it changes colour. Again this version of Android is still a little bit unstable so that's definitely something to keep in mind. Again, if I just go in and turn my volume all the way down and just put something on Spotify, for example, again, when I then go into my quick settings, you'll be able to see exactly what that's going to look like. So again, if I swipe down, you can see that it does have basically the full version. Now, in previous versions of Android, something like Spotify could have a smaller or larger widget. However, for this one, it seems that it's going to be big or nothing. And yes, that may be to some people's preference. I did like the slightly smaller one. This one takes up a lot of the screen. As you can see here, if you've got two notifications, it's going to kind of basically fill half the screen but again it's pretty good you can see everything on there I also did like it when the notification shade matched the album artwork however from now on it's just going to be themed basically to what you're going to find again with your theme that you're going to be using for me I'm using the light theme and again it's picking up blue because again 
no material you just yet but again it looks pretty cool and again you can also expand it to go even bigger if you want to in regards to getting some granular controls with regards to scrubbing through tracks and things like that again play pause works fine and again swiping it away gets you to the settings of the application as well speaking of settings that's another thing that has changed massively and again massive because as you can see everything just seems a little bit larger now don't get me wrong there's not necessarily a ton of new stuff with the android 12 beta in regards to actually changing things but again it's mainly some ui elements that are going to look slightly different to what we've got on android 11. however one thing that is going to be slightly different if you go down into the system settings and then into gestures you've got a brand new gesture which isn't really a gesture it's actually a button for the power menu so for this you can actually now change it to hold for assistant so at the moment if i press and hold on the power button it's going to bring up the standard menu that you would have seen beforehand however you now have the option to hold for assistant once you turn that on, the power button then doesn't actually function like a power button, but a shortcut to get your Google Assistant. So again, pretty cool in the way that that works. And again, something that you know may be a little bit more handy than swiping in from the corners or using that hot word, which for me actually turns on a different ton of different devices in my apartment. So again, having it on my device with a simple button press is actually quite cool to have on there. Now, again, you've also got some other options in here with regards to double tap swiping your fingers around and system navigation all that sort of stuff and you'd also have one other one as well which is going to be the double tap gesture now i really don't like the graphic in the middle there but i'm pretty sure this is just a placeholder what this is basically going to allow you to do is double tap on the back of your device to do certain things so as you can see here you can take a screenshot open the assistant or open specific applications now at the moment if i turn this on you can see take a screenshot is currently selected but double tapping on the back doesn't yet do anything as you can see so again there are some quirks and things with this beta and if you're going to be using it on your daily driver it's not necessarily something that i would recommend yes i've installed it for the purpose of this video but once this is done and filmed i will be switching back to the full version of android 11 just in regards to the stability and okay yes you're gonna you know miss out on some of the newer features but as and when new features get added i'll just opt back into the beta let you guys know exactly what's available and then again switch back to whatever is the most stable version at the time now apart from that in regards to kind of what's new there's like i say not really too much difference now you do also have a really neat new feature that i really do like now if i go into twitter for example you're going to know that you've got a menu button in the top left hand corner now again, if I'm gonna be using that with one hand, it's a little bit of a stretch to get all the way up there. Now there's a new option in Android 12 where you can actually swipe down on the navigation bar and it basically just gets into one-handed mode, much like you'd find in iOS, for example. I can then click on this menu, go to my profile, tap at the top where it says there's the, you know, that gray area, and then goes back to full screen. So again, this is really cool in regards to just getting to those menus that for some reason are still at the very top of the screen on Android. Even now the back button for Twitter is in the top left-hand corner. So again, swipe down on the navigation, press back, go to the blank space, and then again, really easy to work around. This also works anywhere on the actual screen itself. So again, if I do it here on the home screen, swipe down on the nav bar, everything's then gonna shift down. So again, a really nice way to get reachability to Android. And again, for those bigger devices, yes, some do have it already, but it's just a really simple implementation. Now there are some other little things as well with regards to the animations and things. So again, swiping up into the app drawer, once you go down to the bottom or top of your applications, you can see that it does have a nice spring effect to it. And this also goes across certain things as well. If you're in YouTube, for example, and again, you're scrolling through your subscription feed, then again, once you get to the top or bottom of those lists, again, it does have that spring effect. So again, just something a little bit different compared to what we're used to on Android 11. Now there are gonna be a ton of new features like I mentioned, and I will link a cool video down below from The Verge, which basically breaks down Google I.O. into a 10 minute video. So again, if you guys wanna get the lowdown on what happened yesterday, that's probably one of the best places to do it, or just go back and watch the full keynotes. Now, like I mentioned, I will be keeping you guys updated with all of the new features for Android 12 moving forward. So again, if that's something you guys want to see, make sure you're subscribed and turn on notifications. And again, that way you won't miss any videos that I do. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And again, if you've got any questions or comments, let me know in the comments below or on Twitter at Copper vs. Glass. I'm Michael from Copper vs. Glass with a first look at the Android 12 Beta 1, and I will catch you guys in the next video.